Buildings play a significant role in our well-being by providing a comfortable environment in all weather conditions. However, generating an ideal climate is not a straightforward task. Many buildings suffer from HVAC-related issues, which lead to higher energy consumption, running costs, and occupant discomfort. Today, we're exploring a specific HVAC challenge in buildings known as Low Delta T Syndrome. But before we dive into this, let's first understand what Delta T means. Delta T is the temperature difference between the supply and return water in an HVAC system. This fundamental concept can tell us a lot about how efficiently your HVAC system operates. In an efficiently functioning HVAC system, maintaining the system design Delta T and power output indicates effective heat transfer at the design flow rate, ensuring that the system is running at its optimal performance. However, a lower delta T than the one specified in the design indicates lower efficiency. A two degree reduction of the return temperature of the chilled water can lead to a drop of up to 15% in the coefficient of performance of the chiller. When delta T is consistently lower than expected, we call it low delta T syndrome. Some common causes of low delta T are oversized equipment, and incorrect hydronic balancing. A system suffering from low delta T syndrome requires more energy to achieve the desired temperature levels, leading to increased energy bills and a higher carbon footprint. This is detrimental for any building type, but particularly for district cooling applications. Now, let's dig deeper into how low delta T syndrome affects district cooling. District cooling relies on efficient heat transfer in buildings, making it a sustainable and cost-effective solution. How can we ensure that our building achieves the design delta T? When individual buildings suffer from low delta T syndrome, it can disrupt the overall efficiency of the district cooling network. Additionally, it will incur greater costs and potential contractual penalties with the district cooling plant. So, we need to understand the entire HVAC system create the right conditions for the products to operate optimally, and ensure that a sufficient flow rate is available, no more and no less. For example, let's look at this simplified building system with five departments. In this building, the absence of a balancing valve combined with oversized control valves and pump has led to an undesirable water flow through the terminal units. This flow maldistribution disrupts the efficiency of heat transfer resulting in a lower than optimal return temperature. To ensure that the design flow rate is delivered at all times with high control efficiency, the installation of a PIBCV or smart valve is recommended. A smart valve offers real-time monitoring of supply and return temperatures as well as the actual energy output of the terminal unit through the HiTune app. At IMI, we work closely with building owners, designers, and installers to optimize the design of the HVAC system. Our high-performance solution is prepared to assist you in enhancing the performance of your building's HVAC system and ensuring that the design delta T is met, leading to a reduction in energy consumption and costs. Additionally, should you wish to delve further into in-depth learning materials and training, our Hydronic College is ready to meet your educational needs. Let us collaborate on a sustainable and energy-efficient future.